Okay, get taxing probe, other cards. Um, let's go ahead and let's do. So, how many videos does it make before I can like get back Monday? And... Let's do next card towers. So you guys know what's next. I how many towers do I have? I have four. I have eight. Eight towers. I have. Looks like eight mimes. Mines. Four and well, I have a lot of power plants. I have like eleven power plants. These cards I got for like five cents too. <laughs> like the Kataxin probes. Uh, now they're like a dollar or two, and they actually like really easy to trade away into like cards I want. I can trade away multiple playsets into like a flooded strand. When I mean multiple playsets, I can trade away four, four, four into a flooded strand, maybe two flooded strands, depending on their current price. I feel like they trade for like two dollars. I could be wrong. I haven't traded away any of them recently, but these cards were reprinted in Chronicles. These cards are like a lot of these cards I'm going over today. They might be still in those storage facilities. Like when a card owner has a lot of older cards, they put them in, you know, and it says like it looks like it's a common. Like when you look at it, it looks like it's a common. And a newer card owner who are a newer to magic card owner would not realize this card is actually valuable so it'll be put in the five cents card bin and that's where i found these back in the day with the tax and probes and stuff like that when any common was five cents any uncommon was i think like 25 cents and then any all oh, the rares were not put in there and there was a lot of cards like Winter Orb and stuff like that. Those are my favorite stores. And it's not because like you make a lot of money because I spend a lot more. Um, it's about even, break even for me. And because it's just fun to look through like massive amounts of cards looking for like the one or two power plants that you can find that day. And you will find them. And Penhaven is also a very good one. I actually found a one or two legend pen havens i know those are extremely expensive because again legends you look at it and you say to yourself oh it's a common unless you actually know magic and at the store groovy geckos they mainly did warhammer and magic was like a sub actually at my locals currently they do warhammer mostly and video games and magic is a sub hobby that the owner does because he because me and my friends buy my friends and i buy more enough to make it like profitable or encourage him to do it but he's mostly a warhammer kind of guy uh, as table games go so something like this at groovy geckos five cents you could get all this for like five cents so how many is this this is like a lot so 11 plus 8 plus 8 what's that like 16 27 of them for like five cents so that's like a dollar 35 for these lands that now it can trade into like that's the crazy part. If you're kind of the idea that of MTG finance, I never kind of understood the modern MTG finance where you're trying to make money extremely quickly. I've always figured that MTG finance was holding cards like Dragon Speaker Shaman uh, or the Dragon Lord Servant at this point, or like the Power Plants or Get Tax and Probes. Get Tax and Probe, no one wanted that card when it rotated. I can tell you that much. I don't. Did we have modern? We had modern, but it hadn't taken off. And the card is very deceptive to most new players. And most new players who, who sell their collections when they rotate out, the store owner is not going to give like a dollar for this card. The store owner at most is going to give like a, a penny like and buy it in bulk at back in the day. The same with the power plants and all that type. The Urza Tron Lands are a perfect example of cards that were cheap, beyond cheap back in the day. I mean, there was no reason that you would even want this card. Like, it wasn't legacy strong, and it just looked crappy. And you wouldn't use it, like, what would you use it for? Like, if you didn't have, if EDH's tiny leaders, all these formats did not exist like they do today. I mean, we only had extended, modern didn't exist. What would you use the Urza Power Plants to do? Play, like, a vintage deck, I guess? Like, I don't know. Like, maybe legacy deck, but it wouldn't be a tier one legacy deck. So be on the lookout for opportunities. Opportunities always change um, when Magic is doing all of this like reprinting and stuff. And I actually appreciate the reprints. I'm a biggest supporter of reprints because if you are smart about it, you can build your collection much better than I had to build my collection back in the day. 
because these cards that you know are good now go cheaper. So like I didn't know, but like I didn't know the power plants or the the Gitaxian probe and any of these cards are the especially the Dragon Lord. I was opening all these packs to get um, to essentially get the wrong card. Was this there was this goblin dude that was a two two haste and he makes goblins cheaper. That was the card I was trying to get, not the uh, Dragon Speaker Shaman. And it just so happens Dragon Speaker Shaman is the more valuable of the two, right? Just like Force of Will, like. Hell, I don't know what's going on. Like, I just collect cards, and then one day, Force of Will is $80, $90, $100. And I'm like, oh, cool, I have a lot of them. The same with Dragon Lords. I mean, it just happens with these cards. And if you're smart about it, and you collect enough of it, eventually, sometime in the future, you can cash out. But the whole idea of flipping a card, like, within, like, the same day, even, uh, that, I just don't want to play that game. Bye, guys.